What's going on geeks and gamers? This is Ryan with RK Outpost. And today you're about to listen to part two of an EU discussion I did with Lethal Lightning and Chris Knight from The Real Review 3000. In part one, we talked about our feelings and how we got started in the Star Wars Expanded Universe and some of our favorite stories. Now we're about to get into how we felt when Disney bought Star Wars and we found out what was eventually gonna happen to the Expanded Universe. All right, so we all loved what we were getting from the Expanded Universe. We fast forward to the 2012 to 2014 era and uh, Disney buys Star Wars $4.05 billion. And um, we thought there was a lot of hope. We were gonna see some of these things brought to life. And then ultimately in 2014, they say, no, we wanna go our own path. Um, so Lethal, we'll go ahead and start with you. What was your reaction to that? Maybe did you get hopeful and then crushed or kind of what were your feelings towards that? When Disney first bought Star Wars, like everyone else, a bit like the fuck, like really, like yeah, okay. Um, but then the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, we're definitely getting new movies, we're getting new content. It's Disney; they're gonna pump it, pump it, pump it. And then they come around and say, yeah, we're we're scrapping the EU. Now, at the time, I greatly misunderstood what they meant. I thought they were winding it down, so I thought we we're gonna get. Our Nomi Sunrider book, our 1313, our Darth Maul game, our beloved Sword of the Jedi series. God damn, please make that happen. Darth Zana trilogy, whatever. I thought we were going to get it and we we're going to wrap it up. You know, we're going to get like some crazy ending. Because that's one thing that still pisses me off is the fact that it didn't end. You know, there's still no ending to Star yes. Wars or pre Disney timeline. That's what I thought was happening. I thought they were finishing it up and then they were going to reboot which is what they did and then when they said no we're literally just throwing it in the bin I, it, I get i get why you don't want to base your movies off these books because everyone already knows what happens if you've read it or been around or whatever so i get that but i don't see why you had to throw out everything again callum again you know he said that all they had to do was set their sequel trilogy post crucible and you could have done anything you wanted with those movies, which I fully agree with when you sit down and think about it and go, yep, that's 100% right. I think everyone, was, totally everyone was the right age. You would have had 100 years before you knew what happened in between there. It would have been yep. perfect. 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 You could have done anything. And to me, it was like, well, they're going to get rid of it. So they said they can do their own thing and start creating their own stuff, which they really, you know, the best stuff that they've done is they've taken elements from EU, watered it down, uh, maybe throw in some identity politics here and there to you know really whistle it up a little bit, <laughs> put on a big screen, and yes, I, I I was just I'm still dumbstruck. I'm like, why do you do this? Why do you have to completely scrap it? E even if you don't want to incorporate it whatsoever into your main universe, Star Wars was always one timeline. It wasn't like Marvel or DC or anything like that, where there's like fifty two thousand different million multiverses or whatever. It was just one timeline. So if they didn't want to do this one, I still don't understand why they don't just have two timelines. You can have your Disney one and your pre-Disney one here cruising along. And that whole excuse of how well, people will be too confused, that is dumb. That is absolutely a dumb excuse. Yeah, I, fans, aren't, fans aren't that stupid. Like people have been buying Batman and you know, <laughs> comic books for forever that have multiple series, multiple storylines going on at the same time in stores. So that, yeah, I, I agree. That explanation is garbage. Um, Chris, how about you? What were your feelings that when they bought it and then when they said, we're not using any of this stuff and we're not going to continue it? When they bought it, first thought was absolutely great. I, I, I mean, on the surface, let's, let's just face it. Disney's got money. Disney's got the, the, the technology to take this into the next level. Give us views of planets and systems we've never seen again eu stories we'd love to see come to life yes have we read them did we know about them sure but let's see what we can do movie wise yes you know books are ne i mean the movies are never as good as the books per se but just to be able to see it visually would be amazing and that's what i thought i was like great they, I, they've got a gold mine. They've got a plethora of stories they can go off of. And they don't, I mean, whoever could have been in charge of this, other than Kathleen Kennedy, could have sat down, put their feet up on their desk, and just said, 
here's the next one we're going to do. We're going to go give, give me a, give me a script based off of this book. Give me a script based off of this book. They didn't have anything. They didn't have to do anything. They had it all right there handed to them on a silver platter. And when they said they were going to, when they were getting rid of it or not going to go further with it, I'm, I was kind of like lethal. I, I was like, okay, maybe they're going to, they're going to wrap this up and then continue from there, which made sense. <clears throat> and then you started hearing, well, we're not going to, none of this really took place or, or in our timeline, they used the, you know, we don't want to get people confused, which I'm with you guys. It's stupid. Comic book people do this all the time. They like this writer and this illustrator, this writer, this illustrator. Um, and, and you got six different, versions of one comic book like batman like you said for instance where you can follow different storylines because that's what fans do we're able to do that we're able to follow this thing so fine do your disney stuff over here but keep our stuff over here and keep going <clears throat> and if you want to find a way to mix and match them fine i guess do it i would have preferred they just go forward with the eu and incorporated it into what they did, which I don't understand why you couldn't do that, you know? And then like Lethal said, and Marvel's kind of, kind of guilty of this, but Star Wars is absolutely, without a doubt, guilty of this. <clears throat> we'll take what we want when we want to take it, but besides that, no. Yeah, and they always water it down. Yeah, and that's a travesty because these stories were so vibrant and vivid and had, like I said, it was right there. All they had to do is just say, I don't know. It just makes no sense to me why they've done what they've done because they just continuously try to kill off what their fans of their this property they bought. It's like everything they do is just saying, oh, you don't count anymore. Yeah. What you like doesn't count anymore. And that's ridiculous. So That's one thing that completely irks me is like the fact that they'll, throw it out in the bin and then they'll be like hey we're bringing Thrawn into rebels you guys like him right <laughs> yeah yeah let's let's bring that in that completely to me that defeats the entire point of why did you say you want to do your own thing that's not your own thing man that that's before you bought it i don't get that you know like everyone's talking about oh we're gonna you know have this epic old republic movie trilogy if that's what's really happening and i'm looking at it going that's EU. That's not yeah. your own thing. Yeah, exactly. And it, to me, w when that happened, so when Disney bought it in 2012, I was like super excited because I thought that it made everything lined up. Like, like we said, everything lined up and it made sense for them to just continue where they were. They could have a, a you know, older Han, Luke and Leia um, right after Crucible to pass it on to the next generation. So give a movie where you get the gang back together and you feel it. And then they, you get introduced to these characters that a lot of people haven't seen on screen, but there's tons of backstory for already built in. Um, and then you go from there. And when they said that they wanted to do their own thing, I was pretty devastated um, to be quite honest. And I, and that's, you know, I, I went in, I saw force awakens. I would like to say that I saw it with an open mind. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Um, that just because of how I felt when, cause I felt like it was taken away from me in a way. And, and I, that's not right. I mean, it's not mine, but I invested so much time and money and energy and a dedication to the expanded universe. So when they took it away, I, I don't know, I couldn't recover from that. Basically I tried to see a force of wings open mind. Don't know if I truly ever gave it a shot. Mm -hmm. But, um, so let's get into that. Um, one of the reasons that I asked for you guys to be on with me today is because we've all had very different experiences with how we felt about the movies we got from Disney so far, specifically the ones that are part of the sequel trilogy. So like I just said, um, I went into Sea Force Awakens. I didn't like it. I kept comparing everything to all the stuff that I had known to be true in the expanded universe. And I saw that they were just trying to rip off a bunch of stuff from what I thought was a new hope and parts of the EU. And so I, I couldn't stand force awakens. Um, but that was my opinion. Uh, Letha, what about yourself? Um, before that, I was just thinking when you were saying how they could introduce like all these characters with all this backstory before them, 
wouldn't that as well, you know, increase their sales for like their books and their comics, whatever, because everyone would have been like, oh, who's that character? And you go, you have, you don't know who that is, you know, go read all this. It's all there. Yeah, so, and they uh, wouldn't have to pay anyone to write, write anything, it. <laughs> right? It's already produced. You just have to pay royalty fees. Yeah. Yeah. But um, Force Awakens, <clears throat> I went in with a very, very open mind. I, I was just kind of keen to see another Star Wars movie in the cinema again. Um, first one since primary school for me because I was in primary school when Revenge of the Sith came out. So I was pretty keen for this. The trailers, I was looking at the trailers going, yeah, I'm excited, you know. Kylo Ren, I was like, see what's going on with that. You know, he's got a new lightsaber. You know, what's going on with that? Who's this Ray chick that's sitting down going, where the hell is Luke? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went and saw it. Uh, I really liked it. I, I, I saw all the flaws, you know, reflecting on it within a day or two. I was like, yeah, you know, this is just a new hope. Uh, what's going on with her? She seems a bit overpowered. He seems a bit weak. You know, who's that big dude? You know, what's going on with here? What's with Hux giving the speech that, you know, something's, you know, we got another Death Star and all this sort of stuff. I saw all of it, but I just, I was like, look, they're playing it very, very safe just to start things off. Okay, whatever. I can roll with that. So I actually like that movie. I think I saw it two, three times in the cinema. Massive, massive defender of that movie in between that release and Last Jedi. I defended that. I defended Ray. Defended Kylo. Look, Kylo, we're talking about the comparisons. You're going, how can you not compare Kylo to Kylos? You can't. You just can't. And it, it's... it's a, you know <laughs> yeah there is no comparison but you have to make it yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. essentially it's the same character but like a cheap knockoff version but yeah. even then i was like look you know he killed han that's something kindness never did you know maybe maybe we'll give him a chance you know he might end up being a bit of a kindness level badass which hasn't happened <laughs> so I, I i went in with a very very open mind and i enjoyed it i really enjoyed the force awakens i haven't seen it since last year i came out in cinema low because i just can't bring myself to <laughs> so that's where it changed for you was last jedi yeah in terms of plot yeah but there's other stuff you know that lucasfilm have done and the way they treat their fans and that sort of stuff it's been a massive turn off for that sort of stuff but just keeping it force awakens and storyline nothing outside of that yeah that was kind of where i was like what have they done all right. Uh, Chris, what about yourself? I know I'm really interested to hear it um, because, you know, one of the things that often gets talked about about the fandom menace is that we're all just a bunch of people who think the same way. Uh, so I'm interested to hear your, your uh, take on what we've got from the sequel trilogy so far. I, I liked The Force Awakens. I did. I really did. I saw a lot of potential. I'm with Lethal on it. It was safe. It obviously was. They were taking storylines that had been there before. They were following the same path. I think the difference between that and the New Hope is the New Hope was uh, Lucas is basically throwing a whole huge script, cutting it down as much as he could, but he knew he had to have an ending because he didn't think he'd have a trilogy. So that's something that kind of made Disney kind of stealing when they took, did the Starkiller base because well, you didn't have to throw that in there. You know, they could have they could have thought of something better that was going to be on the horizon. They could have built towards something because they knew they were doing three movies. So they definitely played it very safe. And I didn't necessarily have a problem with Ray. I don't the part's not written very well, but it played like a Star Wars movie. It felt like a Star Wars movie, maybe because yes, I went in blindly. I didn't know anything. I dressed up in cosplay as Han Solo. I walked into that theater. I got put up on a stage and everybody was, you know, voting on who had the best costume and all that. And everybody's looking at me. I'm the only one, only person in that theater who is dressed as Han Solo. And everybody's looking at me going like, he doesn't know. <laughs> everybody else knew, I guess, because I didn't know he was going to get killed in that movie. And of course, as soon as it happens, I'm like, oh my God, they killed him. <laughs> God. And of course, from that point on, I'm sitting there like, they got to bring him back. They got to bring him back. And yeah, I, by the, you know, at that, that time I went back and I read all the leaks and all that. That's how I do things. I read the leaks after the movie so I can see exactly how close they were to all this stuff. Um, so I was heartbroken that they killed my favorite character. 
I saw the point of it. It made sense why they made Kylo kill him. So there was a real reason. He, he It was something he had to do. You know, it's kind of like when Luke had to face Vader. So I saw the reasoning for that. I was okay with that. And I went forward looking at it going like, okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. They're, they're going to figure this out. I guess Luke's not there. But yeah, I was sitting there the whole time going like, well, what? I, I, I want to know what's going on with Luke. All they're doing is talking about Luke in little bits and pieces here and there. We're not seeing Luke. Where's Luke? Because they had told people that you're going to see the three of these, our beloved characters, Han, Luke, and Leia, they're going to be together again. And so the whole movie, you're sitting there going like, where, where is this going to happen? And then when they kill Han, and Han hadn't even seen Luke again, it's like, okay, how the hell are they going to pull this off? And you know, then we get to The Last Jedi, which requires even more conjuring of uh, of hope, I guess, to go <laughs> with. Um, but no, I, I, I think The Force Awakens was, um, I guess, taking over a property. It was strong because they didn't know anything about that property. So I, I looked at it as, yeah, okay, but, but they're okay. They did it. They did the right thing. And then, and then the next thing we got was Rogue One. And I know we're not going to really talk about Rogue One, but Rogue yeah, One to yeah. me was like, okay, they, they really have an idea here what they're doing, but we know how that finished up. So, Yeah. But then, you know, the, the one very interesting movie that you, that you're somehow able to conjure hope for is the last Jedi. So you actually, you enjoyed the last Jedi, right? Or at least can appreciate I it. I, I enjoyed it. I appreciate it for what it was. I, I tell people all the time, it's not shot like a Star Wars movie, though. It feels out of place, but my love for Star Wars, and I want to make this very clear, that doesn't mean that people don't, don't like The Last Jedi. I don't love Star Wars. That's not what I'm saying. My love for Star Wars made me find bits and nuggets from the other movies that could explain what was going on enough that I could watch that whole movie and go through. Now <clears throat> there are times when it takes a very giant leap of faith to do that because there are just times when they do things in that movie that you're like, Oh wow. Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but I made those leaps. And so, I explain to people now with nine coming up that I'm more to the fact, uh, more to the point of I'm on a string. This is a very a razor's edge. I'm a, it's very, very thin line. The new trailer that came out kind of dragged me closer to wanting to go see it. And, and that's what trailers do. They're, they're, they're designed to bring you in. Yeah, they gave you 45 seconds of original trilogy footage. I'm sure you liked it. <laughs> hey, well, that's <laughs> true, too. It's like, look, this is what we're finishing up. The, all your hopes and all your dreams, we're going to give you the ending you want, which I don't see that happening. I will go see it, though. But The Last Jedi intrigued me how they handled things. I liked the twists and turns. I tried to look past the very inconsistencies that, plague the movie so i i guess i take the strong parts that i believe the movie has and i throw away the rest so i look at the overall picture and i have found a way that it makes some sense yeah See, that's I the easy it. way of putting it yeah <clears throat> well and i think that you know we're we're all up here we're all star wars fans right mm -hmm. but we all have different takes on what we're getting from disney and that's absolutely fine um the difference between you know us and some other people you know online or at lucasfilm or at these show media sites is just because you have that opinion i'm not going to talk down to you i might poke a little fun every once in a while but i'm not going to call you uh, you know a name that ends with ist or you know anything like that because we all experience things differently yeah. um and you know we're all able to come together and you know talk about one thing that we all really like the star wars expanded universe uh, and you know I, I think that is really cool and something that um 
you know, for a fandom that seems so divided sometimes, you know, I, I think it's important to remember, you know, all the things that we do have in common that we still love. Um, so I guess, you know, in, in kind of wrapping up, um, what would you guys say if someone was not, not super excited about what they got with Disney sequel so far, or they just want to get more Star Wars? What would you say to them if you were to try to convince them to start reading the expanded universe? Read the Thrawn trilogy. Oh, yeah, definitely that. <laughs> <clears throat> what, I, what I would tell you is not only dive into the EU and, and get as much of it as you possibly can, but if you don't like where Disney's taking it, do what a lot of other people have done to take back their Star Wars, as I would call it, and fan fiction. Fan fiction is the, the savior of the EU because if people believe in the EU, fan fiction still can take that forward. And there are some really good authors out there that have continued with EU themes, even though Disney hasn't. So if you don't like Disney, don't give up on Star Wars. Just go and search out the Star Wars you like. That's what I would say. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've come to the conclusion, I, I liked most of Disney canon. I read a lot of their books, a lot of their comics, and they have done some pretty good stuff. Some stuff not so great, but you can say the exact same thing about the EU. But I've just gotten to the point where I look at Disney Star Wars and I just have to say this is an alternate timeline. So I just see the um, EU as like the real one. This is how it really went down. And you can always find something that you enjoy. You know, you sit down and you ask yourself, what is it I like? Do I want to know more about the Sith? Okay, I'll go read some books about them. Do I want to know more about what happens post Return of the Jedi? Plenty of that. Old Republic, you know, that's a big one. So many great Old Republic comics out there and books. Video games, you know, whatever. You know, there's, you just got to focus on what it is you like and start looking there. And then from there, you'll expand out to more and more and more and more. You might start off with something like Dawn of the Jedi, just because it really intrigues you. Hey, you got Jedi running around with swords, not lightsabers, you know, that might interest you. So you go through that. And then, you know, two weeks later, you're bloody reading dark nest, you know, <laughs> just go from one thing to another. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you guys so much for joining me to talk about, you know, kind of our shared love of the expanded universe and Star Wars. Um, I'll give you guys a real quick opportunity here to plug your channels, tell everybody what you have coming up, what they can see on your channel. Um, so we'll go ahead and start with Chris. Well, um, my channel is The Real Review 3000. It's youtube.com forward slash The Real Review 3000. Um, yeah. We've got some, yeah, we've got some stuff coming up that, uh, I know we're doing something about Hollywood being out of ideas. We're working on that right now. And I'm working on probably doing some more star, uh, star Wars stuff. Uh, I do a lot of opinion pieces. So uh, right now I've been on the kick of Disney and Sony and their fight for Spider-Man, but that, that, that just, that's going to never end. Uh, they got another year or so they're going to be back and forth about that. So no, but uh, I, I try to have a different take on a lot of different stuff. I like to do some fun stuff too every once in a while. So, yeah. All right, cool, man. And lethal. What about yourself? I am lethal lightning, the epitome of toxic masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I talk about whatever's going on in pop culture. Cause I'm just such a fanatic of it. You know, video games, comics, movies, TV series, whatever's going on. I like to, talk about that and I encourage other people to get involved and you know, share their opinions and all that. I love getting discussions going on, you know, back and forth, coming out of different opinions, sometimes, sometimes not. Talk about all the controversies and all the good stuff that's happening as well, as well as, you know, giving my two cents on whether something's good or total shit or whatnot. But anything pop culture related, comic books, movies, TV shows, video games, it's all there. All right. Perfect. Well, once again, thank you guys for joining me. Um, it was an awesome. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. Hope to talk to you more about it in the future. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to my discussion with Lethal Lightning and Chris Knight. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I know we had a lot of fun doing it, so expect to see more. Make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, and I'll talk to you guys later. Hey everyone, it's Jeremy from GeeksAndGamers.com, and if you're a fan of Geeks and Gamers, please go to our website, visit our merchandise store. We have t-shirts, hoodies, 
hats, beanies, tank tops, and in the very near future, we're going to have many more products for you to choose from. So thank you for the support. We appreciate it. You guys have a great day, and we will talk to you later. Thank you.